This is the Google Pixel 4 XL. And you see, although the Google Pixel isn't that popular of a phone, at least not compared to uh, a Samsung phone or an Apple phone or even a OnePlus or Huawei phone, it's actually one of the most interesting smartphones on the market right now. And that's because you see, the reason why the iPhones, for example, are so successful and why the UI is so smooth, why they get day one updates, and the reason why they integrate so well in Apple's ecosystem is because Apple makes both the hardware and the software. On the Android side, it's pretty much impossible for anyone to do that aside, aside from Google. And that's because Google makes Android, and if Google were to make their own hardware, then they would be the direct competitor and also the only competitor to Apple's crown in terms of the ecosystem. And well, they actually have made their own hardware for the past three years now with their Pixel phones. And this is the brand new Pixel 4, the fourth generation of Pixel phones that just came out in October, and this is my full in-depth review of the Pixel 4. And honestly, I do have mixed feelings about this, and you'll see why in just a second. Okay, so starting off with the design, let's be honest. Google hasn't really been the best at designing things. The Pixel 1, which came out in 2016, looked like an iPhone 7 did. I mean, just add a home button to it and there you go, literally an iPhone. However, we did have a massive on-screen navigation bar, which made the bottom bezel look even bigger uh, than it already was. So yeah, definitely not a best looking phone. And the back was equally as bad. We had this dual tone metal and glass back, but it was all dark gray and looked very odd. Like, I don't know, I was never a fan of the Pixel 1's design. Then the Pixel 2 came out in 2017, so this was the year when smartphones drastically changed their designs, with the big iPhone 10 redesign and the Samsung Galaxy S8, which removed the home button and shrunk down the bezels considerably in favor for that full screen display design that we were all wishing for for years. However, Google, rather than doing that, the Pixel 2 had some massive bezels once again. It was an improvement over the Pixel 1 at least, however, yeah, the design still wasn't great. It was pretty outdated when compared to the competition. I did actually really like the Pixel 2's panda look. I, I think that that back was one of the best backs on any smartphone, but the front was still outdated and we only had one camera module, whereas other phones started having two modules. So yeah, still behind the competition. Then we got a Pixel 3 back in 2018, which had a very deep notch, even uglier and even deeper than the iPhones. But you see, the Pixel 3 didn't really have any smart tech inside that notch, aside from a more powerful speaker and a second wide-angle camera module, but yeah, that was, uh, that was it. Then the back was further improved, so now it had this dual-tone look, but all of it was actually glass now. So the top portion was standard glass, while the bottom portion was now this frosted glass material, which had a very, very nice touch to it. The frame had a ceramic feel, even though it was just polished metal, so yeah, overall, the Pixel 3 had the most amazing back I've ever felt on any smartphone. Like, design-wise and feeling-wise, from the back at least, uh, the Pixel 3 was just amazing, so things were indeed getting better. And now, we have the Pixel 4 in 2019, which is pretty much the same recipe as the previous Pixels have been. From the front, it looks, um, yeah. Yeah? No. <laughs> Definitely no. It reminds me a lot of the Pixel 2 XL's design from 2017, which wasn't a bad design by any means, but I mean, come on Google, we're in 2019 now, almost 2020, and phones have very thin bezels, large and bright displays, and going into 2020, we'll try and eliminate the in-display front camera cutouts in favor of a full screen slab of glass. But a Pixel 4 still looks like it came out three years ago, from the front at least, which isn't great at all. And also keep in mind that a Pixel 5 is only coming out in October of 2020, which will make the Pixel 4 look even more outdated and even worse uh, in the meantime. So that's the front, now the back is a completely different story. We now get a much bigger camera module than on the Pixel 3, 2, and 1, but don't be fooled because even if the camera module looks extremely similar to the ones on the iPhone, the Pixel 4 only has a dual camera module rather than the triple ones that, you know, everyone else added in 2019. So Google is once again behind the competition in terms of the number of camera modules, more about that in the camera section of this video. But I have to say, if the Pixel 3 had the best back on any smartphone for me, the Pixel 4 is even better. We now have this single smooth piece of glass, so no more dual tone this year unfortunately, however this glass is again frosted glass, which feels absolutely amazing in the hand. It also leaves no fingerprints, yet it still has that glass feel to it, and then the frame of the phone has this matte plastic-like texture to it, but it's not plastic, it's actually metal. I don't know how to describe it, but in a way it actually feels like paper. So yeah, this is by far the best looking and also the best feeling back I've ever seen and felt on a phone. And the power button is also made out of a different color, uh, 
which adds a very nice touch to it. And the Pixel 4 now comes in three colors. So we have just black, which I personally never held in my hands or even seen one in person, but that's actually the only one that has a glossy back. The other ones, truly white and also orange, have the same matte texture on the back. And yes, I'm absolutely in love with how this phone looks from the back. It's got a Nintendo feel and look to it, so to say, so yeah, simply love it. And if you want to make your Pixel 4 look even better, then simply add a skin to it. Such as these ones from Easy Skins, our sponsor for this video. Easy Skins offers literally hundreds of very different designs for you to choose from, from all the major smartphone brands, such as Apple, Samsung, Google, OnePlus, and even LG, Huawei, and Xiaomi. And if you want to get a skin for your MacBook, your tablet, your PlayStation, or Xbox, Easy Skins even offers you that. All of their skins are affordable with free worldwide shipping on all orders over 25 pounds and also include a full body set with wraps for the sides of the phone as well as the top, the bottom and even the camera module itself. So it's up to you to decide which parts of your phone you want to wrap. And if you buy a Pixel 4 skin, you also get an extra set of free matte black skins for the sides of your phone so that you can still keep that original matte black look of the frame. Easy Skins are designed and manufactured in the UK, and Easy Skins also won the Queen's Award for Enterprise in 2019, an award that was personally approved by Her Majesty the Queen herself. Check out Easy Skins using the link below. Moving on to the display, the Pixel 4 comes with a 6.3 inch, 3040 by 1440 resolution OLED display, which is actually pretty good. So it's very sharp at 537 ppi, it's got a 100% DCI-P3 coverage, so yeah, it's also very color accurate. Now, I do have two complaints regarding this display. The first one being the fact that the colors are a bit dull when compared to something like the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, uh, but that's more to do with Google's color profile than the display itself. And then my second complaint is the brightness of the display. So it's just over 400 nits, which is okay, it's actually brighter than the OnePlus 70 Pro for example by a tiny bit, but it's noticeably dimmer than the Samsung Galaxy S10, the Note 10 Plus, or the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Not necessarily a big issue, but if you use your phone outdoors a lot in bright sunlight, then this is something to consider. However, my favorite part about this display is that just like on the OnePlus 70 Pro and the 7 Pro, we have a 90Hz refresh rate display, meaning that everything you do on this phone, the UI, the animations, all of those are 50% faster and more fluid than on any other smartphone with a standard 60Hz refresh rate display. Also, after a recent software update, the Pixel 4 is pretty much at 90Hz all the time now, compared to just uh, when you had it over 60% brightness like it was the case when the Pixel 4 was released. And something that I really, really like about the Pixel phones is that they're pretty much the only phones that come with an always-on display, aside from Samsung and some LG phones. Like, being able to see the time and your notifications all the time is a huge, huge plus. So overall, the display is pretty good, but I would have loved to see thinner bezels and a slightly brighter display. Moving on to the camera, this is quite an interesting one because you see, Pixel phones have always been considered as one of the best phones, if not even the best phone, for mobile photography. And the Pixel 4, same as the 3 and the 2 before it, has an incredible camera, but unfortunately, not as good as I hoped. First, the main back camera uses the exact same sensor, fun fact, as the Pixel 3 did last year. Now, it does, however, have a larger f1.7 aperture versus the f1.8 on the Pixel 3, so it does let a bit more light into the sensor, but other than that, this is the exact same camera as on the Pixel 3. Which is quite disappointing because I was hoping Google to make some big changes with the Pixel 4's main camera, but they simply haven't. However, what I've done this year is that they added a second module, but same thing here, rather than Google adding a wide-angle module like, you know, everyone else is doing in 2019, uh, Google decided to finally add a telephoto module like everyone else was doing in 2017. And I'm not implying that Google should be up to date with the latest trends here. No, that's not my point. My point here is that a wide angle module is technically more useful than a telephoto module is because you see, you can actually zoom in digitally. However, you cannot take a wide angle photo without a wide angle lens. And I mean, Google even had their super red zoom feature before, which already did a very good job for a digital zoom, even rivaling some high end smartphones that had a dedicated zoom module. But yeah, for whatever reason, Google decided to not add a wide angle module to the Pixel 4, but instead add a zoom module. And the thing is, it's not even a very high-end one, like it's not a 5x module or anything crazy like Huawei or Oppo and others have been doing. No, this is literally just a usual 2x optical zoom module, and um, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Welcome to 2017, Google, in 2019, and soon to be 2020. Also, I'm very disappointed with the video on this phone. Like, the Pixel 4 still cannot do 4K 60 video recording, which the iPhone added in 2017, two years ago. 
and all the major smartphones can do 4K60, even most of the mid-range ones. Then the front camera is good, but Google has now removed the wide-angle module from the Pixel 3, meaning that you can no longer take group selfies anymore, since, you know, the front camera isn't as wide. Uh, what I've done now is that I've actually made the regular lens a bit wider than the previous one, uh, meaning that you can still get an overall wider field of view, which is good, but again, it's not as wide as it was on the Pixel 3. But what's not that great with a front-facing camera is that it can only shoot 1080p 30 video when compared to the iPhone 11 Pro's 4K 60, or the Note 10 Plus's or S10's 4K 30. So yeah, there is simply no comparison between those phones in terms of you know, not just the back-facing camera, but also the front-facing camera. Night mode is great, same exact one as on the Pixel 3, however, I did find the Pixel 4 to add a lot of noise in some cases, so yeah, overall, I actually ended up preferring the iPhone 11 Pro's night mode and the OnePlus 7T Pro's night mode over the Pixel 4's. But what Google has added with the Pixel 4 is a brand new astrophotography mode, and by the way, this is huge, guys. You can now take photos of the night sky, similar to what you can take with a proper DSLR camera. But that's pretty much it, aside from the astrophotography mode, the camera is pretty much the same as before, even a downgrade on the front, and yeah, I'm obviously disappointed. And because of this, I just cannot recommend the Pixel 4's camera, as the competition offers a much better camera overall, with significantly better video quality, significantly better front quality for video, and also a wider angle lens on the back. So yeah, Pixel 4 used to be the king, Pixel, uh, but definitely not anymore. Definitely make sure to watch our ultimate blind camera test between the Pixel 4 uh, the OnePlus 7T Pro, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and the Note 10 Plus to see exactly how well the Pixel compares to all the other flagships. So yeah, it's not looking great for the Pixel so far. So what about the performance? Well, it's, uh, it's okay. It's very, very fast and fluid, I can give it that. Uh, in our ultimate speed test between the Pixel 4 and the Note 10 Plus, the Pixel 4 loaded apps just as fast as the Note 10 Plus, even though the Pixel 4 only has a much slower UFS 2.1 storage, versus the twice as fast UFS 3.0 storage like the OnePlus 7T, the 7T Pro, or the Note 10 Plus. CPU-wise, we did not get a Snapdragon 855 Plus, just the 855, which is almost a year old at this point, and it actually is. Like, the 865 is now official, so yeah, Google is already a year behind in terms of the CPU as well. And this is because they have this really weird release cycle where they release their phone in October, and then Qualcomm announces a new CPU two months later in December. RAM-wise, we do get a bump to 6GB of RAM from the Pixel 3's 4GB of RAM, but even that's still half of the 12GB of RAM that Samsung or OnePlus offer, um, and that definitely shows. Like, RAM management is just pretty poor on this phone. It could barely keep any apps open in the background when compared to the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. However, we do get day one updates and also software support for around three years. For example, the Pixel 4 from 2016 is still fully supported, which is pretty awesome. And that's because you don't really get this level of customer support in terms of software, unless you go with the iPhone. Uh, and then OnePlus is also a pretty good option, but they don't offer you day one updates. Uh, and you do have to wait a few weeks or even a few months in order to get those updates. But yeah, the Pixel is pretty much the king if you care about updates and also software customer support on Android. Now, when it comes to special features, we do get one feature that stands out from the competition, and that is face unlock. That is actually the reason for that big forehead, since that's where all the 3D depth mapping sensors are housed. It's essentially the same system that Apple uses for Face ID on their iPhone 10 and newer. But then Google also added a, another feature, which is a small radar chip, and this is from their Project Soli, by the way, and this chip can actually detect movement much more accurate than a regular camera could. This works in conjunction with the face unlock system in order to make the face unlock process insanely fast. Like, from the moment you pick up your phone, the pixel lights up the display, and in less than a second, it's already unlocked, which is pretty nuts. Like, this is noticeably faster than the iPhone's Face ID system, however, it is far from perfect. Like, third-party app support is basically non-existent at this point, so if you're thinking about using your face to access your banking apps or anything like that, you cannot do that just yet. And it also works when your eyes are closed, which Google said that they will fix in a future update, but we still don't know when that's going to be. Now, the Solar Radar chip also allows you to control your music and interact with a pixel by just using your hand gestures, which is a pretty cool party trick, but in practice, it just doesn't work. Like, it's, you know, the Samsung Galaxy S4 from 2013 all over again, and it just does not work. And, you know, especially it doesn't work like Google thinks it should. So... Yeah, motion gestures, just don't put them on phones because it's easier to just touch them. Like, what's, what's the point? Now, it does help make face unlock faster, so at least the Soli radar chip is being used for something useful. Uh, then the speakers are no longer front-facing like on the Pixel 3, which, you know, I'm okay with that. Uh, they do sound good, just not as good as on the iPhone 11 Pro Max or the Note 10 Plus, but still pretty good.
But I mean, other than that, we don't have Wi-Fi 6, we don't have reverse always charging, we don't have a micro SD card or even more than 128 gigabytes of storage, which by the way is the maximum amount that you can get with this phone. In fact, speaking of storage, Google has now removed one of the best and the key selling features of the Pixel 3, which was unlimited photo and video storage at full resolution for free with Google Photos. Like what? That was like one of the main key selling features and now it's gone from the Pixel 4. Like what are you doing, Google? Also gestures. While you can now indeed swipe left and right to go back, which is pretty cool, uh, it seems like Google forgot about a case where some apps use swipe gestures to bring the menu on the left. Uh, so yeah, the new Pixel gestures are messing that up with quite a few apps. So yeah, that's not great. Okay, now moving on to the battery, it's uh, decent. It's far from what the competition offers, by the way. And that's because the battery itself is quite small at just 3,700 million powers on the EXL and 2,800 million powers on the Pixel 4. And especially with that 90 hertz refresh rate display turned on, it's noticeably worse than on the OnePlus 70 Pro, which wasn't that great either. I haven't really tested out the battery that much myself, and you'll see why in just a bit, but yeah, overall the Pixel 4 XL has an okay battery life with a decent fast charge of up to 50% in 34 minutes, which is right on par with the competition, so yeah, that's great. Okay, so in the end, is the Pixel 4 XL worth it? Well, absolutely not, no way, like sorry Google. Just know, this thing cost 830 pounds in the UK or $900, which yes, this is a bit cheaper than a Note 10 Plus, which costs 1000 pounds or $1,100, or the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which costs $1,150 or 1150 pounds. But then if you compare this phone to Pixel 4 to the OnePlus 70 Pro, which costs 700 pounds or even $550 for the OnePlus 7 Pro in the US, and these phones are so much better. Like they offer a better performance with a Snapdragon 855 Plus on the 70 Pro, up to 12 gigabytes of RAM, up to 256 gigabytes of storage, a more modern design, a larger display, a larger battery, and I can just go on. And these are significantly cheaper. Um, yeah, the cameras are worse on the OnePlus phones, but not really by that much. And you can even install the Google APK, uh, camera APK, and get a much more improved camera that way. And yeah, the thing is, I was honestly just bored with the Pixel so much that I couldn't use it as my daily driver because it was a downgrade from the iPhone, it was a big downgrade from the Note and even my OnePlus. So yeah, Google, I'm guessing that fifth times the charm. But yeah, definitely subscribe to the applications. If you wanna see more in-depth tech videos and reviews like this one, hopefully it was in terms of, you know, the depth. Um, and yeah, this has been pretty much it. If you guys wanna buy a Pixel 4, I wouldn't recommend it, but hey, if you want to buy a Pixel 4 or a OnePlus 70 Pro, then definitely consider using the links below, the Amazon affiliate links, because you don't have to pay anything. However, Amazon does give us a small commission on their end, and uh, yeah, that helps support the channel and videos such as this one. So um, thank you. Thanks to Google for sending over the Pixel 4s, and yes, I do feel quite bad uh, giving Google this bad of a review, but hey, what can I say? All reviews are always 100% unbiased, and I'm always trying to be as honest and as unbiased every single time. So I do appreciate Google sending this. However, you need to improve your pixel with a fifth one. But yeah, this has been pretty much it. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Then Effect, signing out. Cheers.